fortune, she retreats quickly into the protection of the forest. But a determined adult male won't give up easily. Male bears have been known to kill the cubs of unknown females, and then mate with the females themselves. It's a dirty tactic, but it's certainly one way of ensuring their genes are passed on. Bear cubs will climb up trees to escape danger. As the male moves closer, their mother desperately tries to keep them at a distance. But this guy isn't going anywhere. She charges at him, and her cubs instinctively follow her. She ushers them back into the cover of the forest. But now she's torn between defending her cubs and trying to scare off the marauding male. Today is their lucky day. This male seems to recognize the female. It could be that they mated the previous year, and he may even be the father of these cubs. Either way, he's certainly not interested in attacking them. He just wants to eat in peace. One final test. Proves to her he's not a threat. But not taking any chances, she leads the cubs away. <laughs> For the cubs, this first brush with danger is just a hint of the challenges ahead. They will remain with their mother for up to three years, mastering the survival techniques needed in the forest. In the forests of Sweden lives a creature known as the Phantom of the North, with razor-sharp claws. They move almost silently and strike. The great gray owl is perfectly designed to hunt all year round. Using hearing alone, they can locate their next meal. Even under 12 inches of snow, prey is clasped in vice-like talons before being swallowed whole. With a wingspan of up to five feet, this deadly aerial assassin is one of the biggest owls in the world. Despite being such an accomplished hunter, the great gray owl isn't skilled at everything. They don't even build their own nests. Instead, they make their homes in the abandoned nests of other birds. And moving into a ready-made pad is useful when you're hunting all day and trying to raise a family. This breeding pair have three chicks. And despite hatching only days apart, their size clearly defines the pecking order. With mom standing guard, dad goes hunting. Returning with the catch, it's obvious who needs it the most. But there's no polite table manners here. If you take too long to swallow your dinner, your sibling will finish it for you. 
Here, only the strongest survive. If this little guy doesn't start standing up for himself, he'll be dead within days. Back in Iceland, summer is in full swing. The vixen is barely recognizable, having lost nearly all traces of her winter coat. Her search for food remains relentless. Now five weeks old, her cubs have finally emerged from the den. They've had a tough time. Of the ten, only six have survived. But they're no less demanding. The older they become, the more vital their need for milk and meat. They must grow up fast. Come fall, the cubs will leave their mother to face the bitter Arctic winter alone. For the past few weeks, there's been no sign of the intruder, and mom has been able to venture out and get food. But now he's back. Prowling her territory, the strange male watches the family's every move. With no mate to protect them, the mother does what she can to warn him off. For now, her piercing call has the desired effect. 1,500 miles west of Finland lies the biggest island in the world. Despite its name, Greenland is hardly green at all. 80% of its landmass is covered by a giant glacier. an enormous river of ice, millions of years old, slowly but constantly moving towards the sea. A seemingly inhospitable realm, but in true Scandinavian style, life always finds a way to thrive. On the coastal cliffs, Birds that flew over 1,500 miles to the British Isles to avoid the Greenland winter are back to nest now that the summer has arrived. But even the avian tourists don't get an easy ride. Barnacle geese nest high up on barren stone cliffs. Laying their eggs and hatching their chicks on narrow rocky ledges. Out of harm's reach of the scavengers that wait eagerly below. If only the Arctic fox could get to them, he'd indulge in a family sized feast. But there's no way he can scale this cliff face. It's not just the scavengers below that the chicks need to worry about. They are the prime target for pirates of the skies. With their bird's eye view, the gulls easily spot their victim, wandering just that little bit too far from home.
The gull's razor-sharp beak and unhinging jaws make light work of its fluffy, wriggling snack. The parents can only watch helplessly as their chick is devoured. In Sweden, some of the feathery forest residents are getting five-star treatment. Room service delivered directly to their branch. It's not burger and fries. For great gray owl chicks, rodents are on the menu. And whoever shouts the loudest gets the grub. It's a round-the-clock regime for the doting parents. For the chicks, it's the ultimate fast food takeout. But out of the original three, only two are being waited on. Their greed meant the smaller, weaker sibling didn't survive. In the race for life, everyone is a contender. Friend, foe, or family. Barnacle geese employ a rather shocking parenting technique. They don't bring food to their chicks. Instead, they take their chicks to the food. But this poses a bit of a problem. The chicks are just hours old and unable to fly. And the richest pickings are a long way away, 150 feet straight down. Just hours old and unable to fly, these chicks are about to get their first taste of extreme sports. Base jumping without a parachute. With no path to follow, the only way is down. Amongst the mayhem, the chicks are unprotected. Predators waiting in the wings want in on the action. Any stragglers are quickly picked off. These parents have taken a huge risk with their family. And this time, it hasn't paid off. They started with five, and they've ended up with only two. The surviving chicks have just seven weeks to get big and strong enough to fly so they can make the 1,500-mile migration to the British Isles with their parents in the fall. In Finland, golden-eyed ducks take a similar approach to parenting. For the ducklings, this is the equivalent of a man jumping from the top of a seven-story building. 